You're very welcome. We're now going to have a pipe melody uh, by Phil Cotter. So we're just going to start our event today. <laughs> Jerry Murphy, many of you will know that, not, not everybody will, so I'm introducing myself. And you're all very welcome to the church town. Fall to have over a penny. Um, this event is organised by the Church Town Historical and Heritage Society and also by the Church Town Village Renewal Trust and in association with the Church Town Development Association. So I get all those names mentioned, community organisations mentioned first, right? So in Church Town, we believe in celebrating what is good and we believe in celebrating what is positive and we are huge, hugely I suppose proud of what we've achieved in Churchtown not just in the last 15 years and not even in the last thousand years but in the last 350 million years right <laughs> Jack Moylan. so we will um, introduce it thus Churchtown's romance with the horse may be traced to two bloody battles during the Confederate Wars of the 1640s, when panic-stricken animals fleeing from the battlefields of nearby Liscarrow and on the 3rd of September 1642, and Nottingham us back there near Kenturk on the 13th of November 47, were taken into care by Churchdown people at Buffers Cross which ensured that only high quality equines ploughed Churchtown lands henceforth from Anna to Welchestown, who had the best plough horses in Ireland. Fast forward to the 1890s and we find Churchtown Stud Company operating from 1893 as a precursor to the establishment of the Churchtown and Egmont Studs whose progeny was eagerly sought after both at Tattersall's in Doncaster and later at Goff's in, in Dublin, in County Kildare. The founder of that dynasty, Edward Flannery, owner of that pub, which is now known as Boss Murphy's, became the first Churchdown man to own, a to breed a classic winner, when his son Brendan captured the 1902 Irish Derby. His sons, John and Frank, operating respectively at Churchtown and Eggman Studs, achieved continued success. In fact, um, John had a, a stallion over there um, in 1924, which was descended from the legendary horse a stallion, the Tetrak. And if anyone wants to look up, uh, look up the Tetrak as record, and his markings, he had extraordinary markings, and the old people that reared me here in this house told me that the stallion, Krakentoff, also bore some similar markings. They had retained it right through the progeny, which is fantastic. In 1919, Miss Bessie Cowie of Churchtown House, just behind the graveyard over there, became the first lady owner of an Irish Derby winner. When her horse, Loch Lomond, won the Irish Derby at the Curra by six lengths and beat the English favourite. Uh, a lot of money was made here uh, on that. The 1930s saw so Daniel O'Brien of nearby Clash Gannon, who uh, he sulphured in the capable hands of a certain Jack Moylan, and for more and on, won the 1938 Cambridgeshire. In 1944, Dan's son Vincent. <laughs> completed the autumn double with 20 to 1 shots, good days and dry bob, who did heat it. 
Vincent Train Cottage Rake to Irish Tsar with success before the rake went on to capture the Cheltenham Gold Cup three times in succession, a feat later uh, equaled by Beth Mate and Jim Cullity. And then Vincent, of course, start, commenced his assault on the flat, and we all know what he achieved on the flat. Wonderful. Um, and we are very, very proud of that O'Brien Association. The marriage of Andre Mazzarella to a local lady, Nora Gaffney, in the 1950s, saw our equine connection take a further twist. Owner of a number of highly successful show jumpers, including the famous Mr. Softy, Andre had several of his top class horses spend the off season in Churchtown House. And we eagerly followed their progress. In fact, David Broom was quite often here in Churchtown. Meanwhile, Mr. J.J. Gordon, who's too shy to come in here, initially a successful amateur rider, and later a successful trainer of Anna, ensured that our equine connection continued. Later, Thomas O'Brien, who um, one, one time owner of O'Brien's pub down the road there, he engaged in a very successful amateur uh, riding career as well. Dennis and Anne Fehan at Egmont with their brilliant hurler Nick, Nick Dundee, some of you may remember Nick Dundee who was tragically killed later, and Peter O'Sullivan who had a small plot of land but he uh, had very luck, he had great luck with a horse called Deep Romance. They brought further glory to our parish. We were absolutely thrilled to learn in the spring of 2004 an internationally famous rider, Jim Cullity, had purchased the Mount Corbett uh, demean less than two miles from here and intended to turn it into a multi-million training and breeding establishment, which he has done. So we're going to start now and we're going to have a little song, another song uh, from, from PJ, an appropriate song because he's uh, singing it outside this pub across the road there, right? <laughs> There's a sweet garden spot in my memory it's a place I was born and reared. Oh, it's many long years since I left it, but go back there I will if I'm spared. My friends and companions of childhood would assemble each night near a score around Boss Murphy's shop. How oh, often we sat on the stone outside Boss Murphy's door. Well, now I'm going to invite uh, Stella and Michael to come up here, right? So each, uh, at both sides here, this of the of the plaque, right? Between the two of them, and you're going to unveil the plaque then, right? So we're unveiling the plaque now. Okay, so you can pull back the curtain between you, right? Okay. Okay, so we now have the plaque unveiled. Okay, so this is a, a lovely bronze plaque to join the other plaques that are on the pillar. So, Michael, we run there. You, run, you said you will say a few words for us. Okay, we'll, and we'll give you the microphone and invite you to address us. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for coming here today and this wonderful day. I never enjoyed anything like it. I'm not going to say too much more. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Michael. I'm sure it must be a very emotional event for Michael and Stella here, you know, to have this plaque unveiled to their father after all those years. So we appreciate that. So now, our next, our next uh, part of the show, which was not scheduled, but we're delighted to have it, is Dennis is going to introduce Eddie Hart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 1969, entry, and an Irish winner. Highland Wedding coming over the last, ridden by the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Harty. Yay! It's a great honour to be here today. The Boylans and the Harties go back to God's old time. I had four uncles, professional jockeys. They would have ridden with Jack and his brother Paddy back in the 20s and 30s. But to learn any game, any person that becomes successful, 
um, in any game has got to serve an apprenticeship. And myself and my brother Buster served a long apprenticeship to Jack's brother Paddy. He was head man with our father. And any bit of skullduggery, cheating, <laughs> stopping horses, making horses go, we learned from Paddy and the Moylands. And that all came from the Turk. And one other thing, too, that is of interest, that the great Vincent O'Brien rode one of his two bumper winners for my Uncle Henry, who trained at Patrick Swell in Limerick. But as a regarding a family in the horse world, there's no better family than the Moylands. But as regards people, there are no better people anywhere than the Moylands. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. Well done. Well done. Well, there you are. That was a, a nice surprise to have Eddie Harty here. I, I had forgotten that Eddie Roar at Highland Wedding. Actually, that was 1969. I was in boarding school in Dungarvan, and I had a gamble on Highland Wedding, and I backed the national winner that year. And little did I ever think that, you know, so many years later, I mean, I'd be here in church, and we just 43 years of it, and that the jockey would be here, and we'd be celebrating Jack Mylan. So, I mean, that's a, a wonderful twist for us, right? So we're now, we're now coming to the end. Uh, of our event, right? The, this is the former part of it. I mean, we're all going to go back to Boonies and have tea and sandwiches and whatever afterwards. There's two nice pubs in church, John, O'Brien's and Boss Murphy's, and you can all enjoy yourself there as well afterwards. There's an American tea party tonight, but I'm not sure what the, what the status of table availability is on that, but we're going to have a nice weekend anyway. But before, we're going to finish with uh, uh, Noel Linehan, who's going to sing the Church John National Anthem. And the Church National Anthem is Magillamar, which is a tune composed uh, by Sean Clark MacDonald, the poet of the Mag. So, unless I've forgotten anything, uh, I suppose uh, we would go straight to that. I, I should, I suppose, thank my colleagues and thank you all for coming as well, right? So, we'll, once we have our next song over, we'll retire to Boonies again. Thank you very much. Shall the rouse our maiden shave an ishim pine truck height a train, Michaelic drown a down guard drain, the bar and connake is in him again. Shame a lick, Mogilla Mar, shame a hesser gilla mar, soon no shame for a spade. O coi gi gain ma gil a ma Beam she boon is boot cock low A qui go crue gis a to the nor Ma squealy goi man bukul bio Is ma rain for tourish uig ma groan She ma lek ma gil a ma She ma hes or gil a ma so no shame for a spit, O coy again, Margilla Mar. Ni laur and cook is surker known, is neil gog ir er quil te cano, no mad and sour egg lawn tape cho, O de me go em on bukel bio. Shame a lek Margilla Mar. Shame on his or Gilama. So no shame for us, then. Oh, call again, Margilla.